Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, November the 17th, 2022. It is currently 9.44 a.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live from the Theology Central studio located right here in Abilene, Texas. Now, are you willing to participate in a, in, in a little experiment? Are you willing to participate? I hope you are today, sometime today. I want you to leave your house. I know, I know. It may be cold outside. I don't know what the weather is where you live, but I want you to get in your car and I want you to just drive around looking at, well, nature, but specifically, I want you to go find a lake, a river, a pond. I want you to go find water. If you live near the ocean, I want you to go look at the ocean, look at the lake, look at the river, look at water today. And I want you to ask yourself a very important question. Where did water come from? What is the origin of water on earth? Now, I know you may think this is ridiculous. I know some of you are like, I am not going to get in my car and go drive and look at the ocean, look at a river, look at a lake, look at a pond. I'm not going to go do that. I've got better things to do. But I want you to do so, and I really want you to contemplate that question. You may think it's a ridiculous question. I know as Christians... We probably feel like it's ridiculous, but it's a question, well, they're they're still trying to answer. Okay, let me try to explain. When it comes to the origin of everything, you really have two basic systems, right? System number one, in the beginning, God. Now, yes, I understand many who may say God is the origin of everything. He created everything. They may have different concepts of God. They may have a a false God from a Christian perspective. They may not have the God of Scripture, but either they're going to look to a God, some supernatural deity as the origin of everything, or they have to start trying to figure out how things originated here, how things got here. So they have to look at some kind of natural process that that did something, time, chance. They they start looking and looking and looking, trying to figure it out. Now, they, they will describe the origins of everything in the most scientific language they can. They may use a lot of big words. They may sound authoritative. They may sound smart. And they may look down and laugh at your idea that, nope, God is the origin of everything. They may laugh at that. But honestly, if you try to push them, what is the origin of everything? It's like, well... I mean, in the beginning, I guess there was, you know, everything was, you know, compressed down to this one single, one point of singularity. And on a Tuesday at 3 p.m., it blew up. And from that explosion, everything arrived. Everything is here. We end up with atmosphere and planets and stars and a sun and moon and birds and animals and water and air and and just everything. And, 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 well... That at times is hard for them to explain, but they they always are looking for new, for new explanations. They're always striving to find new explanations. It's just like when you get to a discussion about the origin of life. They're like, okay, well, the right chemicals come together, you get life. Or they'll go, you know what? No, no, no. Life originated here because it came from somewhere else. So then they will spend billions of dollars on space exploration, trying to find life somewhere else. Because if we can find life somewhere else, that will help us understand life here on Earth. And I'm always like, but well, even if you, even if we were to find life somewhere else, and if you, and you think that that explains how life got here, well, then that doesn't explain how life got there. So wherever you find life, you're going to have to go further out to find, well, how life got, you're going to just, it's a never ending search because you're going to keep going. Well, where was the first place life originated? We have to find the first place. And then from the first place, it went to the second place. From the second place, it went to the third place. And from the third place, it went to the fifth place. And then finally, it came to earth or wherever it is in the chain. How would you know if we find life on Mars, we find life somewhere else? Absolute proof that this is life. And it's the origin of life on earth. 
How do you know that that is the place where life originated? In other words, you're just, you're just pushing back the problem. But yet it, they continue and billions of dollars are spent on it. I know I know a lot of people get upset with my view on space, space exploration. I just feel like we spend billions and billions and trillions of dollars to go out there to figure out where life came from. When there's life on this planet dying of starvation, a lack of water and medical issues, but we'll spend trillions, we'll spend trillions to go look for life instead of sp- spending those trillions on, I don't know, preserving and making life better here on earth. I, I know, I know, I know my, my view on that is, is, is very negative, but I just think from a theological perspective, I don't need to go find the origin of life. I, I think life originated right here because of God. But if you remove God, you're left with lots of questions, right? If you remove God, well, what, what's the answer? If you remove God, well, where, 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 what do you do? So I think you really have two, I, I hate to say it this way, and I know that this is not probably being completely fair, but I think the two systems are in the beginning, God, or, well, we don't know, but we'll keep making up some theories. And I know that's not fair. And listen, I love science. I, I want I want scientific exploration. I want them researching, questioning. I want them doubting. I want them, I want them constantly pursuing every theory and idea they have. I, I, I do. I really do. Now, I know what you're saying, but you, you just called into question space exploration. I call into question the amount of money spent on space exploration. If it can be, if it can be done th- privately funded, not publicly funded, not through taxpayer money, then I'm more for it. But when it becomes taxpayers are spending, you know, trillions of dollars of, of tax money is going to get us out into space so we can try to figure out where life came from. I just, I just feel like that that's, that's crazy when there's life here on this planet that is suffering and dying. In many cases, some of those issues could be taken care of. But I support science. And listen, let's make this very clear. I support every scientific theory being taught, right? Even if a child is homeschooled, I think that they should know the theory of evolution better than their public school counterparts. They should know it. They should understand it. They should know the latest, newest scientific theory. They should understand it, be able to take it apart. I want them to know that. I want them to be able to walk into any university And when they go to science class, they can participate in anything because they know the theory and they know the idea. I got no problem with that. My issue is the unwillingness to acknowledge that once you throw out God, what are you left with? What's the origin of things? Well, well, it's very complicated. And you see, it took 87 billion years and this process and then this gas crashed into this and then this and that. At times, it just sounds like Instead of acknowledging what you don't know, you try to cover it up with a, a big theory that sounds so complicated, and then you come across as condescending, saying, well, the reason you don't get it is because you're not smart enough. That I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of. Now, why am I bringing all of this up? Why am I starting this Thursday morning bringing all of this up? Well, late last night, I'm listening to podcast. The BBC Minute. Now, the BBC Minute, they drop a new episode about every 15 minutes, maybe every 30 minutes. It's one minute long, and it comes from the BBC, and they give just a real quick, just a real quick, like, you know, 59 seconds of kind of the latest headlines. They don't really go into depth. They don't really say much. It goes by quick. It goes by really quick. But it's a good way just if something is breaking, if something is happening, you will at least be alerted to it for the BBC Minute podcast, all right? So I'm listening to an episode. Um, I think they were talking about some controversy with the World Cup or soccer or football, whatever the, the, the correct name for it is. I think there was something going on there. Um, I can't remember. There was just a couple of stories. I really wasn't paying attention. And then all of a sudden, I heard about a meteorite. I'm like, oh, a meteorite. I, what's going on? And then they were like, this meteorite demonstrates how water got to Earth. And I'm like, wait, they found a meteorite that proves how water got to Earth? I need to find this. So I got out of bed. I came, I come running up here to the studio. I'm like, BBC Minute, BBC Minute. I started looking for the podcast. Now, if you look for the podcast feed, it only gives you the latest episode. That don't give you the archive. That don't give you the, the, uh, the library of previous episodes. So I downloaded the newest episode thinking, okay, this is it. I hit play and I'm like, 
Where is the story about the meteorite? I can't find why. What, what happened? They'd already updated the feed to the next episode because, again, it drops like every 15 minutes. And I'm like, I need the old one. Where is the old one? And I could not find it. I'm like, oh. Okay, what's going on with the meteorite? I need to know the meteorite, the meteorite. So I started looking and looking and looking and looking. I'm like, okay, well, it doesn't appear that, that there's a, anything happened with the meteorite in the United States. And then I saw the name of a town in England, a town. So for anyone listening to us in the UK, you may be familiar with this town. I wasn't. It's this town. Winchcombe. 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 Have you ever heard of Winchcombe? I've never heard of Winchcombe. Maybe I should have. Winchcombe. But I guess Winchcombe, a, a little town, I don't know if it's a little town, a town in England, Winchcombe, supposedly there is something known as the Winchcombe meteorite. The Winchcombe meteorite. And I was like, Winchcombe, uh, Winchcombe meteorite. I think I've read something about this. Okay, and I'm like, I have to look, I have to look, and I have to look. So I started doing some searching, and I came across a story that was published 18 hours ago. I'm like, okay, I'm on to something. Meteorite, it mentions water, it mentions winchcomb, and this comes from sciencenews.org. Sciencenews.org. The pristine winchcomb meteorite suggests that Earth's water came from asteroids. There you have it. Why do I want you to look at water today? Because either you believe in the beginning God created the heavens and the Earth, which included water, or you believe that Earth's water came from asteroids. Asteroids crashed and brought water to... So the water on Earth came from somewhere else. See, but, but then the question is, well, where did water, do you understand how this is just, it, this is maddening to me. This is maddening to me. I'm, I'm throwing pencils right now. I'm throwing pencils. This is maddening to me because it's the same issue with life. How did life get here on earth? Well, it came from another planet. So we need to spend billions to go out there to find the life. Well, if we find the life, well, where did that life come from? We just keep asking the question, where is the origin, original source? Well, now water. See, water didn't originate on Earth. Water was brought here from asteroids. Okay, well, then where did the water come from? Wherever the asteroids brought it from. Like, like so I, I guess to all the answers, we have to go into space to find all the answers. We can't find the answers here. But I guess unless they're brought here. But here's the story, all right? Here's the story. And you can, again, you can find this at sciencenews.org. The pristine Winchcomb meteorite suggests that Earth's water came from asteroids. Bits of the space rock were picked up within 12 hours after landing in an English driveway. So they 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 land they landed in an English driveway. Then there's pictures of two uh, two individuals. They're uh, outside. They're on their on, on the ground. They're laying on the ground. They're digging in a hole. Um, and they've got these little bags. So obviously what it says underneath the photograph, researchers from the University of Glasgow in Scotland founded pieces of the Winchcombe meteorite in a field. So I guess uh, some of it was found in a field. Some of it was found in a driveway. I don't know. Here, here's what we know. Late in the evening of February 28th, 2021, a cold, dark space rock about the size of a soccer ball fell through the sky over northern England. The rock blazed in dazzling eight-second-long streak of light, split into fragments, and sped towards the earth. The largest piece went splat in the driveway of Rob and Catherine Wilcock in the small, historic town of Winchcombe. I apologize if there's some historical significance to Winchcombe. I currently, obviously, at this moment, sitting here in my studio in West Texas on Thursday, November the 17th at 9.59 a.m. I, for some reason, do not know the historical significance to Winchcombe. Someone's going to email me and go, because you're an idiot. And I may I may have to acknowledge, but I just, th the name Winchcombe does sound familiar. It does sound familiar. 
But I, I'm, I, 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 I don't know at the moment. All right, here we go. An analysis of those fragments now shows that the meteorite came from the outer solar system and contains water that is chemically similar to Earth's, to, to Earth's water. Scientists report uh, November the 16th in Science Advances. How Earth got its water remains one of science's enduring mysteries. The new results support the idea that asteroids brought water to the young planet. Now, a couple of things. First, (laughs) did you hear that? That one of the enduring mysteries for science, enduring, in other words, we've not been able to come up with a sufficient answer as of yet, is that we don't know where water originated from. We don't know. We don't know how water got here. We don't know how water got here. Now, that, that to me is fascinating because, once again, I have no problem with schools, universities, teaching, evolution, science. I don't, I don't, they can teach all the theories, all the ideas. What makes me angry is sometimes they won't admit what they really don't know. They teach things in such a dogmatic way, and if you question it, it's because you're uneducated and you're an idiot, and then we find out you don't even know where water came from. You don't even know how water got here. Hey, I don't know how water got here, but I know 65 billion years ago, this animal turned into this animal. Okay, I know I'm I'm oversimplifying it, but it's just like on one hand, they can act like they're so dogmatic, but they don't even know where water came from. And let's be honest, they don't even know how life originated. They think they do, but they don't. That's why there's the theory that life came from another planet. That's why we continue to spend billions of dollars to find it. And now water supposedly came from another planet. So everything came from somewhere else. But if you go out there to find it, as soon as you find it, wherever you find it, well, how did it get there? You're going to continue to have the same question. So that, that's, that's really the, the, the crux of the story. I could go through and talk about all the research they've done and all that they're trying to figure it, figure it out. But I mean, they're, they're just trying to, (laughs) They're just trying to figure out where water came from. That's basically what they're trying to figure out. So let me read that part again. All right, here we go. An analysis of those fragments now shows that the meteorite came from the outer solar system and contains water that is chemically similar to Earth's. So because there's a chemical similarity, I don't know how similar it may be. We would have to dig into the research. But because of the similarity, they're like, that's it. Our water came from there because there's a similarity. Now, does similarity mean just because two things are similar, does it mean it has the same or like the same, like, or our water is chemically similar to that water. So our water had to come from that water. Like, is that, is that, is there, is that the right way to to draw that conclusion? Scientists report November 16th in Science Advances. That's where the, uh, the story, I guess, origin, origin, originated. Science advances, and that was a report from November the 16th, and and it's how Earth got its water remains one of science's enduring mysteries. The new result support the idea that asteroids brought water to the young planet. So today... You can, if you, if you don't, if you don't want to leave your house, just go to the kitchen, just turn on your sink and just watch the water come out and go, where did that come from? Where did that water originate from? How did we get water here? How did, how did it happen? How did it happen? Now you've got two options, God or, well, asteroids brought it here. And you may go, well, see, I'll go with the asteroid theory. It makes more sense. It's scientific. Okay, wonderful. But where did the asteroids bring it from? And how did it get there? And if we go find the water that supposedly the asteroids, the source of the water that the asteroids brought to us, and we go find it, well, when what's the source of the water from there? Was it asteroids Further out, they took it to that place. Like, how how do you how do you understand this? 
it just seems like an odd it, it just seems like an odd way to try to answer the question. It, it just feels like it's an odd way to try to answer the question. It really, really does. It just seems like an odd way to try to figure it out. The same thing with the life thing. That life came here from another planet. Okay, well, wonderful. Now, you've got the same problem. So I, I don't get it. I look. I I do understand, and I know I've did a little bit of joking around and trying to be, being a little bit sarcastic here. Look, on one hand, I do understand how people could look to us, like look to the Christian world, and they they open up Genesis. And they're like, okay, so in the beginning, God created. And how they may be a little bit hesitant to God. No, 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 no. We, I need a more materialistic, scientific explanation. And if they're not bothered enough by Genesis, say, 1 and 2, in the beginning, God created and God speaks things into existence. If that doesn't bother them, now let's just be honest. I mean, come on. Let's, we, we can set aside. I know that from a Christian perspective, we may not think this way, but let's just be fair. Once we turn to Genesis 3 and we end up with a talking snake, right? You got to be, you, you, come on. You know they're going to be like, okay, now wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're, you're trying to tell me that I need to look to, myth, they're, they're going to refer to it as mythology and some crazy story for the, sor- for the uh, origins of everything. No, I, I'll take my chances that it came from outer space. I'll take that it came from, from somewhere. Else. And I can understand. They're, they're trying to find what they believe it to be a scientific explanation and they don't like our explanation coming from a supposed religious text that has things like a, talk, a talking donkey, a talking snake, all the crazy things, a, a man being swallowed by a giant fish, all the crazy things that have had the parting of the Red Sea, plagues, yeah, all the someone being raised from the dead, all the things that would be like, well, this doesn't make any sense. And I can understand that. I truly can understand that. I truly can understand that. It's just sometimes I wish they could stop and go, but listen to your story. Your story was in the beginning was matter, right? Based, the basic way I guess of explaining it, in the beginning was matter. Matter was all pressed together in a, a point of singularity. And then it just blew up. And then everything everything. The, just the right chemicals, the right gases collide into one another. And that creates this. Now you get a star, you get a planet, boom. And then finally earth is formed and just the right, everything comes together. So there's an atmosphere. So, and then all of a sudden inside the oceans, which the, the, they get, they got there because they were brought there by an asteroid supposedly. So asteroids crash into this thing called earth and then water shows up. There's water, the right chemical balance. Now we have an atmosphere. And then all of a sudden in that ocean brought to us from outer space, from another galaxy, another solar system, all of a sudden things start swimming around. Things start crawling around and life is forming in those oceans. And then sooner or later, something crawls out. Now, I'm sorry, I know you can describe the other in a far more scientific terminology. I know you can describe it in a way that comes across as highly intelligent. And I'm, and I am acknowledging that many in those fields who hold to these theories are extremely intelligent. They are, they know far more about it than I do. And they can explain it in the most intelligent way. But if you just boil it all the way down you don't know how water got here. You don't really know how life got here. And so your go-to get out a free gel card is, it's out there. It's out there. It's out there. So let's go out there. And when we find it out there, we'll know how it got here. We still won't know how it got out there, but at least we'll know how it got here. So we really won't have a good answer how it got there, but at least we'll know how it got here. That's that seems to be the now the scientific way of doing things. And I, I just on one hand, I want to believe, and I and I and I do believe this. I or at least I do mean this, I should say. I want to believe 
that there are, there are objections to in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. I deep down, deep down want to believe, want to believe. That is, it is because of so-called scientific evidence. It is because they have seen and, and learned things that clearly call, call into question Genesis 1-1. I truly want to believe that it's intellectually sincere, that it's a real objection to it on the basis of fact, on the basis of evidence. I truly want to believe that's why they reject, they reject Genesis 1-1. I truly want to believe that deep down. But when you find out that they don't even really know where water came from, then there's a part of me, there's a part of me that at least, at least wanders in my mind. Like I I have these questions in my mind. I, I'm just curious. I, I just, I just have sometimes a, a feeling that their objection has less to do with evidence and proof and scientific knowledge and years of research It has less to do with that and more to do with the fact that the minute we say in the beginning God created, then we are no longer in charge. We no longer are the authority. We no longer are the source of truth. We are no longer the source of meaning or purpose or morality. The minute we say in the beginning God then God becomes the standard. He, we look to him for purpose. We look to him for meaning. We look to him for morality. And he, therefore, is the sovereign. And I think in many cases, we cling to these scientific ideas, not because that they have the evidence and they truly can explain it, but because it removes God. And if God is removed, then in a sense, we can become our own gods. We can be the God who determines what my, I am the captain of my ship. I am the captain of my own fate. I am the captain of my soul. As long as I say in the beginning, there was just matter that blew up, then I'm, I'm the pinnacle of it, uh, of this entire evolutionary process. We are the top of it all. We, we are the conquerors. We are the kings. We are the deities. But if I, For just a second, go, maybe all of this so-called scientific evidence, maybe it's more there just because it's man's attempt to dethrone God and to throw God off the throne so that we can become gods. I think we have to at least consider that as a possibility, a probability, Because when you basically look at water and go, well, here's my great scientific theory. I can explain this in the most scientific terms, but if I just simplify it, that water, well, it got here because of an asteroid. Or asteroids, plural. And life probably arrived on similar asteroids or similar way. Now we don't know where we don't know how it got where it came from, but that's how it got here. And they would say that's the intellectual way. And in the beginning, God is the foolish, uneducated way. I will admit that the biblical way doesn't appear to be the most educated way or the way of of great scientific discovery. At the same time, I'm willing to admit that the rejection of in the beginning God may have less to do with science and more to do with one's desire to be God. You can tell me your thought of the whole story of the, I got to look at the name of the city again, the Winchcombe. Meteorite. You can read about it, the Winchcombe Meteorite. There's articles all over the place. You can start at sciencenews.org. And uh, supposedly this meteorite suggests that Earth's water came from asteroids. Love to get your thoughts on this today. Newsif at yahoo.com. Newsif at yahoo.com. That's newsif at yahoo.com. Everyone have a wonderful day. We'll be doing live broadcasting off and on throughout the day and evening, as we always do. The uh, the Church One app is the app to go to, Church O-N-E, Church O-N-E. Download the app, 
Google Play Store, Apple Play Store. Once you download the app, do a search for Theology Central. It becomes the Theology Central app. Now, a word of advice to Android users. I was going to say Asteroid users. Android users. It appears that some people don't like the Church One app because when they're trying to listen to things, it will stop in the middle for no reason. Here's the key. Yeah, now, you can't do this for a live broadcast, obviously, but for everything that's on demand, everything that you, that's there that you can listen to, just when you get ready to listen to it, just hit download. Download it, then listen to it. You won't have any problems. When you're done, you go down to the little download tab and just swipe, I think, to the left or to the right. A little delete button will appear and you just delete it from your phone. It, it's an easy, easy process. Just download it before you listen to it and then you won't have any problems with it disconnecting or having any problems. And it just it also, it, it stops from buffering or everything else. So download, that's the key. Download, that's the key. All right, uh, Apple users have not complained of that problem. It's only been Android users, which I know. <laughs> don't let me, don't let me go through my dark, dark war stories of dealing with Android users and apps, okay? We had our own standalone app for our church. Our own standalone app. Oh, it was so wonderful. I miss having that app, okay? But that the company went out of business and the new company was, well, boy, they were going to charge us twice as much and not even do half of what we needed it to do. Uh, but, okay. But the bottom line is we now have our own app, really, with the Church One app. But guess what happened with that app? It was Android users. I'm not getting notifications and this won't work and this won't work and this won't work and this won't work and this won't. And it was always an, as soon as someone call, contacted me with a problem, I'm like, let me guess, you're using an Android phone. Okay, well, okay, click. I can't help you. Okay, our app is only for Apple users. Okay, but once again, it's Android users having a problem. I don't, I, look, and it's hard for me to troubleshoot the problem. Because I don't have an Android phone. I don't have an Android device anywhere near me. I don't have, everything is Apple. Well, I guess the only thing I have that's not Apple is the computer right here. It's a Dell. Uh, and the only, and the only reason, and the only reason uh, is because the, uh, I don't have the money. <laughs> I don't have the money for an Apple device. But when I get the money, this Dell computer, go and just think of all the issues I've had with the Dell computer. Give me a MacBook Pro. Yeah, that's what I think it's I called. I, that's what I need. But uh, no, it. but that's a simple uh, solution for Android users. And supposedly, I've heard feedback that once they download it, then not. Okay, uh, someone's saying they're trying to leave a comment, but something is not working right. Okay, well, probably because you're using an Android phone. All right, there you go. Uh, number two, I'm seeing your comment right now. So, um, I don't, I may, maybe I don't see your previous one. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll check my iPad. Let me check my iPad. All right. Someone's trying to leave a comment. I don't know what they're going to try to say. Maybe it's something important. Here we go. Let me see here. Oh, so. Hang on. Hang on. We're going to look here. All right. Uh, let's, I'm going to go to the discord channel to the listener trying to post a, a comment. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that funny, funny, funny. Okay. So the way I'm supposed to be reading this is trying to leave comment something not working right because they're using an Android phone. <laughs> it's so funny. It's <laughs> okay. It's not funny. No, it's uh, it's not funny because everyone contacts me with the problem. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. Here's what I want to say when someone contacts me. You have an Android phone. Here's what you need to do. Find a hammer. You've got the hammer. Please go outside. Put on some safety goggles. Smash your phone into a million pieces and go get an Apple phone. Okay, all right, there we go. But see, I can't, I can't do that because you want your Android listeners to not be offended by that. But yeah, but when we had our uh, standalone app, it was just constant. It was always an Android. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. And I'd contact the app people. And this is what the app people would say. Oh, let me guess. They use an Android phone. And I'm like, well, I, <laughs> I, that's not the answer I need. You're the tech support people. Okay. So, all right. Okay. So now that, that was, that was funny. All right. Yeah. Android phones. They're about as useless as a theory that says water got here 
because of an asteroid. Aha! Ha, see, now I made a joke. All right. Thanks for listening. I'll be back on the air at some point. And I know I'm going to probably get now emails from Android users saying they're going to boycott the program. It's just a joke. Calm down. I was giving you information so that you can use your Android phone and still benefit from all the wonderful comment, all the wonderful comment, all the wonderful content of the Theology Central podcast. Thanks for listening, everyone. Have a great day. God bless.